गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन मैडम यू कैन स्टार्ट पहले से कैन स्टार्ट मैम योर लाइव क्या है दिक्कत क्या है हेलो यस यस आई विल बी स्टार्टिंग हां बाबू से बात किए वो स्टार्टेड आएंगे वर्धन नेशनल रिसर्च प्रोफेसर आयुष इंटरडिसिप्लिनरी स्कूल ऑफ हेल्थ साइंसेस सावित्रीबाई फुले पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी डॉक्टर एन श्रीकांत इंचार्ज टीजी सेंट्रल काउंसिल फॉर रिसर्च इन आयुर्वेदिक साइंसेस डॉक्टर अरविंद चोपड़ा डायरेक्टर एंड चीफ रिमोटोलॉजिस्ट सेंटर फॉर रिमेटिक डिजीजेस डॉक्टर वी एम कटोच प्रोफेसर डीजी आईसीएमआर एंड सेक्रेटरी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ हेल्थ रिसर्च एंड प्रेसिडेंट जिगमा I would like to thank you all for being with us today. We also have Dr. Vishwa Jannani Satyagiri with us. Thank you, ma'am, for being with us today. I am with you, Dr. Rashmi Sharma, scientist, Indian Institute of Integrative Medicine, Jammu, and I welcome you all for the talk today. We are also live streaming the webinar on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter web pages. Audiences who would have any questions can put them in the chat boxes, and we will take up uh, at the end of the seminar. and uh, the search for covid-19 drugs reinvigorated interest in the field of traditional complementary and alternative system of medicine ayurvedic and other traditional herbal medicines are being popularly used in india to prevent and treat covid-19 since the beginning of the pandemic csir is working in close collaboration with ministry of ayush on four herbal formulations to address the covid-19 challenge today in the webinar we would be discussing the role of traditional medicine for covid-19 with the emphasis on ayush 64 first i would like to invite dr s chandrashekhar director iict for his opening remarks dr chandrashekhar is a fellow of all the three indian science academies national academy of sciences indian academy of sciences indian national science academy he has made significant contribution in diverse areas of organic chemistry synthesis of biologically active natural products and pharmaceutical products and he has received several accolades including eminent scientist award cnr rao national prize for chemical research csir technology awards in process prize in chemical sciences etc thanks for being with us today sir over to you thank you namaste to all thank you rashmi for uh, having me on board with all of you today it's a pleasure to be a greeting professor katoch always smiling giving mentorship to all the health programs of the country greetings on behalf of csir to all the dignitaries on the call today greetings to bhushan patwardhan ji thank you sir for joining the call with us shrikant of course vishwajani coordinating this event uh, from csir headquarters and we have many other uh, colleagues shrikant and of course uh, uh, we have chopra ji on the call so greetings to all of you and also all the colleagues who joined uh whether on on youtube or on uh, live stream so today we are on this platform uh, to share some of the research activities uh, we have been working closely with uh, the ministry of ayush and of course while there are legends on the call today who would share their experiences on uh, ayush 64 i would like to just briefly tell all the colleagues on the call today how csir has been working with uh, uh, mitigating this covid since the pandemic began i only would like to reiterate that uh, dr shekhar mande our dg csir who is instrumental in uh, having this webinar today and also director triple i am jammu ram vishwakarma who have been working with the ministry of ayush very closely and csir started uh, working around april 1st uh, last year when the covid began and we divided all our activities into five verticals hoping that uh, we could handle the pandemic uh, in a better way and those were on the uh, call for the first time today with csir family i would like to share that uh, these five verticals include surveillance we all know that such an important event uh, we need to know uh, the uh, the percentage of uh, positive cases and uh, which pocket is happening which is zone has to become red zone and all the surveillance was playing a critical role and of course uh, when the pandemic began you all know that we did not even have ppe kits and uh, diagnostic kits with us properly so again we also had a vertical diagnostics uh, which uh, was led by anurag agarwal of uh, igi i mean uh, igib delhi so we were able to launch uh, one of the finest uh, uh, crispr cas based uh, technology faluda which is in the market which is uh, launched by tata uh, i had the privilege of uh, leading the drugs vertical where uh, drugs vaccines and of course phytopharmaceuticals the 
topic of today's event uh, were uh, taken care of by me. Many colleagues in CSR, about 15, 20 labs, where we have experts in this area working very closely, either with Department of Ayush or internally funded programs. And then a lot of uh, you know, progress has been made in this area. We also have a vertical called Devices, uh, which is currently headed by the director of NAL, Jadav Sahab. And we were able to do not only PPE kits, surgical masks, but also ventilators. I think which played an important role again uh, during the second wave. We all know that first wave somehow we managed well, but second wave we had a big challenge and then the you know, contributions of uh, the ventilators and oxygen enrichment units and all that developed by this vertical played an important role. We also realized that there is a challenge on supply chain and Dr. Anjan Ray, Dr. IAP was leading this supply chain uh, program. And we also looked at how raw materials could be sourced for various activities, including the programs of Ayush. So I'm sure today's uh, discussions will enlighten us and also see how these adjunct therapy or add-on of uh, these Ayush products to the modern uh, therapy what currently we are practicing, will it be dexamethasone or let it be remdesivir or any other combinations, whether we'll be able to handle the pandemic in case a third wave comes. So I also would like to bring to the notice of all my friends today and that uh, CSIR is uh, the only lab in the country Triple M Jammu again, where I think Rashmi is uh, comparing this program, is the only lab where we have a GMP uh, certified kilo lab for uh, products which are to be used in Ayush. So this is something very unique and we are proud of it. Those who talk of uh, the herbal products or phytopharmaceuticals and Ayush products, people will not uh, uh, be you know, forgetting the contributions made by CDRI. I think one of those first products, Google Lipids, which, which became a game changer those days, uh, done by Dr. Nityanan, Dr. Sukhdev and many other colleagues from CDRI. So certainly ISCT, I mean sorry, CSIR and many labs uh, within CSIR family have an important uh, role uh, in these phytopharmaceuticals and identifying the active principles, uh, making the marker compounds. And we're also aware that the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has given us a call some time ago on how we can connect the traditional knowledge with rational using the modern science. I'm sure these kind of uh, research activities in collaboration with Ayush and other ministries will surely enable us to bring scientific solutions uh, with proper validations so that uh, those products are well accepted by the by the medical fraternity and also will be well received by the patients. I'm sure this uh, event would be of uh, important relevance to all the practitioners of Ayush and also those who are trying to look at natural products and see how best we could uh, take uh, this medicinal chemistry um, leads which we get from Ayush and make them proper uh, drugs for cure. I wish all the colleagues on the call today all the best. I also would like to place on record Dr. Vishwajanani for bringing all of us together. Thank you. Over to you, Rishmi. Thank you, sir, for introducing and focusing of uh, the role of CSIR and Ayush in combating COVID-19 and introduction of traditional medicine uh, to fight the pandemic. Uh, our first speaker is uh, Professor Bhushan Patwardhan. Professor Patwardhan is currently National Professor Ayush Interdisciplinary for Health Sciences, Savitri Bai Phule, the University. He was Vice Chairman and Chairman in the Council of Social Science Research until March 2020. Currently, he is Chairman of RNP Task Force on COVID-19, Ministry of Ayush. Professor has 30 years of experience in research and development in the area of evidence-based Ayurveda, ethnopharmacology, drug discovery and development, and integrative medicine. He will be sharing today on traditional Indian system medicine and integrative health approaches. We are happy and delighted to have you here, sir. And uh, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rashmi. Uh, let me first congratulate uh, the whole CSIR team uh, in fact, I would like to salute CSIR uh, for the outstanding contributions made during these very difficult times. And thank you, Dr. Chandrasekhar, for quickly uh, giving an overview of various contributions in various fields, not only in uh, medicine or drugs, uh, but all other supporting services also, CSIR has played a role. Uh, I must uh, appreciate uh, the leadership of Dr. Shekhar Mande. Uh, at CSIR, as well as uh, Vaidya Rajesh Kotecha at Ayush. These two coming together is highly significant because Ayush represents our uh, heritage, 
uh, our uh, traditions, our health systems, uh, you know. And on the other hand, uh, CSIR represents the science technology and the uh, whole uh, uh, scientific community uh, which works uh, uh, for creating different kinds of evidences, which is so crucial uh, for uh, contemporary representation or revalidation of our own medicines. It is very crucial in today's time. And uh, as uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar has told, you know, uh, CSIR has played a major role. <clears throat> I was uh, part of it uh, during 2000 uh, as the uh, Nimitli program on herbal drugs. At that time, I would like to also uh, acknowledge contribution from Dr. R.A. Mashalkar, you know, who uh, created this golden triangle, uh, bringing ICMR, CSIR, and uh, uh, Ayush uh, together. So uh, TKDL, which Vishwajanani is uh, very efficiently leading now, uh, is also outcome of that. Uh, so the, uh, today uh, our spotlight is on Ayush, but uh, the theme is uh, traditional medicine, you know. And uh, I, I would just quickly uh, take a, a review. Uh, I will not speak much because the eminent speakers and uh, colleagues, you know, uh, uh, Dr. V.M. Katoch, Dr. Arvind Chopra, Dr. Srikant, all of them uh, are part of this uh, Ayush CSIR uh, initiative and they have contributed significantly. They continue to do that. So they will be expanding on uh, more, but I'll just keep some pointers and not go in details. Uh, uh, first of all, um, all of us know that uh, we are in really a existential crisis uh, today. You know? Uh, and there are many uh, gaps, there are many questions. Uh, the origin and spread of this virus still remains a mystery. Uh, in this whole uh, pandemic, both rich and poor countries are affected. Uh, vaccine availability, all, it is improving. Uh, rapidly uh, mutating virus is posing newer challenges. You know, means while one day we feel that we have understood this virus, next day something new is emerging. You know? There is a serious problem of reliable and authentic data. You know? and there are contradictory claims, uh, various kinds of exploitations happening. There is politics happening. Uh, even uh, reputed journals are jumping in it, you know, like Lancet uh, writing editorial about the uh, uh, performance of Indian government and particularly our prime minister by name. You know, so this is all, uh, you know, happening uh, globally. Uh, there is a massive breakdown of trust. That's what we can see. It's palpable, actually. Uh, I, I, we all know that there is no definitive treatment as of now. Uh, and I must tell you that COVID has brought both modern medicine and Ayurveda uh, at the same level playing field because COVID is as new uh, to modern medicine as new it is to Ayurveda. You know? Uh, both have strengths and weaknesses. The traditional medicine, have, uh, when I say Ayurveda, I incorporate everything, you know, Ayush, essentially. Uh, and uh, uh, COVID-19 has emphatically exposed the inadequacy and incompetence, if I may say, uh, of monopolizing a particular system. Because we have to, there are strengths and weaknesses everywhere, and we have to take best, which is available, uh, work on it, uh, and uh, then uh, adopt it. You know? So this kind of a integrative approach is the need of the time and that this COVID pandemic has really underlined, highlighted and taught us in a way. Uh, uh, I, I would say that this, uh, although this adversity, uh, we have found a way uh, in way of opportunity uh, for creating a new integrative paradigm. So I will not go in the uh, uh, detail of uh, disease uh, of COVID because now it is uh, known to most, but uh, the incubation phase, which is uh, uh, affecting immune homeostasis by altering regulatory cytokine levels is something which uh, must be understood. And in this uh, phase, a lot can be uh, um, uh, learned from the traditional systems of medicine. I, we, as we know, majority of COVID uh, patients are asymptomatic, mild, and moderate, uh, uh, wherein uh, the T cell uh, response, uh, which get uh, uh, suppressed, you know, as it progresses, uh, leading to uh, low macrophage function and lymphocytopenia, etc., and then uh, moving into cytokine storm and inflammation. So, at every stage, I would say 
uh, till such time the patient really becomes critical at every stage traditional medicine has offered to uh, uh, prevent as a very, very effective prophylaxis, uh, the, followed by uh, the management of uh, mild to moderate uh, cases. And IU-64 uh, has been repurposed for this particular purpose, you know, uh, uh, like uh, uh, drugs like ashwagandha and guduchi uh, are being uh, studied for prophylaxis, you know, drugs like uh, uh, yashtimadhu and uh, pipili and guduchi uh, are being studied also for clinical management. So this is a CSIR Ayush initiative wherein these four drugs are being very, very carefully studied in randomized controlled trials, multicentric trials, you know, all these trials have robust protocols and all these protocols are registered at CTRI. We all follow GLP, Dr. Chopra and Dr. Kotoch will expand on that. But uh, just to emphasize that these are very, very well controlled, statistically powered clinical studies. And uh, as we progress, I think in the current situation, the typical healthcare today, which is dominated by vaccines and primary healthcare approach, uh, public health approach, you know, uh, and uh, the moving to the really cure uh, in terms of hospitalization, wherever it is necessary, strengthening diagnostics and drugs, you know, all, all this. But slowly we are moving in the third phase of it, you know, from care cure to we are leading to some kind of a scare. And we are experiencing uh, this care which is being generated uh, because of this uh, COVID pandemic. And from scare, we are actually moving into uh, scams. Uh, we are witnessing various scams which are coming up. And affordability is emerging as a very, very uh, 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 critical area you know, in uh, modern medicine. For instance, uh, if you look at the uh, CIPLA's uh, uh, Roche COVID antibody cocktail uh, in India, 60,000 per dose is a cost, you know. So what poor people, uh, they are going to do? So the balancing this kind of uh, uh, affordability, accessibility issues, on the other side, balancing also the need versus greed issues, you know. These are because we have seen the kind of uh, uh, exploitations that have happened. And I feel that the solution to all this uh, uh, scenario, which I just mentioned, you know, uh, lies in the effective integration of traditional systems and modern systems. You know? Imagine if we are able to really prevent uh, this disease uh, right in the beginning, in addition to vaccine, uh, there are possibilities that uh, you can also improve the immunogenicity of vaccine. And we are we have planned actually a new trial which will begin very soon. It has been just registered in CTRI. Dr. Chopra will talk about it more. But uh, we are actually studying co-administration of ashwagandha uh, with uh, Covishield uh, to see how it can be effective, especially after the first dose of vaccine. You know? uh, so these are various ways in which we are trying to study this. Uh, although we talk about traditional medicine, uh, I believe that medicine is medicine, you know, whether it is traditional or modern, because modern medicine also some years ago, it was traditional medicine. It was traditional Greek medicine and traditional Greek medicine walked with uh, science and technology and therefore it became modern medicine. I also believe that the diagnostics uh, uh, cannot be the monopoly of any one particular pathy. You know. Diagnostics is uh, developed by uh, with help of science and technology. And even during COVID pandemic, we have seen that CSR has contributed substantially to develop newer kits and all. So uh, it is not only a sectoral monopoly of a particular uh, pathy or anything. And rather than getting into the silos and rather than uh, talking about or caring about our own turfs and converting into war of turfs, we should really look more what people need. People need simple ways to prevent disease. People, people need simple and safer medicines, you know, uh, to control uh, their progression of the disease. You know? And uh, people also need uh, better care post-COVID, because uh, long COVID is also coming up in a uh, serious way. And in all this, traditional medicine, Ayush system have uh, to contribute uh, much more, more, more significantly. Uh, I must also at the end mention that uh, we, we know now today, immunity and inflammation are at the central. They are at the core. And immunity and inflammation in both, you know, Traditional medicine or IU system have great things to contribute. Various immunomodulators, various uh, simple interventions such as Anutel, 
uh, you know, which is Nasya process in Ayurveda. And uh, DBT also had joined us. I must tell you that uh, THSTI, a uh, lot of preclinical studies are also undergoing uh, way, and maybe Dr. Shrikant will give us some glimpse on that. But in early studies, Dr. Madhu Dixit has demonstrated that several of these medicines, which are actually used in Ayush 64 also, have antiviral activity. No, in uh, proper uh, Syrian hamster model, uh, she has shown this and various other studies also have endorsed that kind of effect. So uh, while uh, 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 various uh, uh, traditional medicines are available, there was a need uh, to uh, come out with a systematic scientific studies on them, both preclinical and clinical and mechanistic studies. And that need has been addressed by this historical, I would say, Ayush CSIR collaboration, primarily uh, led by the two leaders, visionary leaders, Shekhar Mande and uh, uh, Rajesh Potechaji, uh, with the whole team and uh, uh, eminent uh, scientists really supporting this initiative uh, leaving aside uh, the disciplinary boundaries and the uh, epitome of this example, I'm not exaggerating, is Dr. Katoch. You know, Dr. V.M. Katoch, I remember working with him at the planning commission in 2012 when first time in the formal documentation, the integration terminology was introduced at his instance. You know, So this has a very, very good potential to become a leader, actually, in effective integrative management, which can be a model for the world. We are not only talking about India. The world is looking for safer, affordable uh, interventions, you know. And Ministry of Ayush and CCRAS must be complemented for this purpose. You must have seen that several guidelines have come uh, from Ministry of Ayush, you know. So as a part of uh, uh, COVID task force, you know, I must uh, also thank all my colleagues on the task force and all the scientists who are working at CSIR and uh, CCRS who are contributing relentlessly and also private uh, medical professionals such as Dr. Chopra. Dr. Arvind Chopra is a, a private medical professional, but day and night he's working on this task. You know, he's chief clinical coordinator. So by, uh, this particular initiative, I would say that it has dissolved all kinds of boundaries, mind boundaries, disciplinary boundaries, and this model will go a very, very long way. I uh, thank uh, CSIR and Ayush both uh, for experimenting this, and I'm sure uh, this will be a great success in the interest of people and in the interest of global community. Namaskar, Jai Hind. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Professor Patwardhan, for this insightful lecture. And uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of questions we will be taking at the end of the discussion. Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you. Our like, next speaker for today is Dr. N. Shrikant. Dr. Shikant is in charge, DG uh, Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences, Ministry of Ayush. He oversees the research activity of the Council, Medico Botanical Survey, Chemistry, Pharmacology, Ayurveda, and Literature re uh, Research. He would be giving uh, an overview on Ayush 64 today. He is also the nodal officer for the Ministry of Ayush related to. Uh, Dr. Shrikant? Uh, I'm sharing this email. Kindly yes. permit, I will share, share this. Sure, sir, sure. Is it visible, madam? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, sir. At the outset, I respected Dr. Kato, sir. Is the former uh, DG, ICMR, and uh, uh, Secretary DHR, Professor Bhushan Patwardhanji, and Dr. Uh, Vishwajani Madam. I will put very, uh, and other all other gatherings, uh, uh, just uh, in, the, in collaboration with the CSIR, uh, CCRS and Minister of Ayush has, uh, with the approval of the interdisciplinary task force, we have st started uh, uh, four studies. One is on Ayush 64, and Guduchi, Eshtimadu, and Ashwagandha. 
uh, for profile access as well as the intervention studies for the management of COVID. Today, I will put a brief uh, overview on I-64, which is developed by Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences. Uh, 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 the I-64 is a, a, a polyherbal uh, formulation, uh, which is actually developed by Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences, uh, initially for the malaria in 1981. It, it contains four important herbs and uh, it has been developed through an extensive pharmacological uh, safety studies, clinical studies, and also after having uh, developing the quality standards uh, and uh, other uh, studies. And in view of the uh, little scientific background, and the, the interdisciplinary task force has recommended, uh, 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 which is said by Professor Bhushan Patwadhan sir, recommended this uh, for the repurposing for the COVID-19. Uh, but uh, before repurposing, there was an extensive uh, and uh, a discussion and consultative process regarding the availability of the quality standards and evidences of the preclinical safety and efficacy. And efficacy, really, what uh, malaria studies has been done, conducted by uh, CCRAs. And some uh, some evidences on symptom management in influenza like illness we have and its antiviral activity. And uh, besides this, all classical references, uh, which actually uh, support the uh, for repurposing, repurposing the uh, this for I-64 for, for particularly uh, uh, for COVID-19 uh, uh, mild to moderate and asymptomatic uh, asymptomatic to mild to moderate uh, COVID-19. Uh, simultaneously, we have conducted molecular uh, docking studies also uh, in collaboration with the Indian Council of Medical Research (NIM). And that also uh, actually uh, supported a lot, uh, particularly for understanding how this will act. Uh, I-64, it contains four important ingredients. One is Aristoglia scalaris, that is uh, Saptaparna, and Epicroriza curra, that is Katuki, and Cisalpinia cristar, Cisalpinia banduk, that is uh, Lata Karanj, and it also Sersia chirata, that is uh, Kirata Tikta. These are the four important ingredients. And uh, the, the, while uh, designing this, actually, for particularly malaria and uh, other uh, uh, disease, simple flu and all, a lot of work has been done, uh, 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 classical reviews. All the four ingredients ha having antipyretic activity, some are antiviral activity, immunomodulatory activity, and uh, it is hepatoprotective activity. It is also anti-diabetic activity. Also, they possess thicker rasa. That is uh, the bitter uh, taste, which according to Ayurveda, which has a, a better uh, 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 pharmacological action, and particularly on infectious diseases and all. Then uh, these are the some uh, glimpses of uh, uh, the uh, the pharmacological Ayurvedic pharmacological uh, profiles, particularly of uh, uh, the uh, uh, these uh, I sixty four ingredients. Uh, Saptaparna it is having uh, immunomodulatory anti tussive anti asthmatic and expectorant activities katuki immunomodulatory anti uh, asthmatic and anti inflammatory activity lata karanja anti viral anti pyretic with anti fungal and anti oxidant activities this we are putting little glimpses and kirata tikta anti inflammatory anti viral anti fungal these are some uh, uh, glimpses i am giving there are several uh, papers we have only i have put some important uh, uh, papers from peer reviewed journals with this uh, I uh, think uh, the quality standard also we have developed. I'm not going much details about the quality standards, which is required for uh, according to drug and cosmetic cat as required for uh, 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 um, uh, drugs, uh, uh, which is under category of patent and proprietary medicines. It is a class of uh, uh, medicines under uh, Rule 158B and drug and cosmetic act. We have conducted all will fulfill the all the uh, requirements as required for uh, licensing this uh, I-64 with the reproducible uh, uh, standards. The safety studies they were conducted while it was developed for uh, particularly malaria. Acute subacute toxicity studies uh, of, were conducted and it was found uh, safe, particularly uh, 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 in I-64, particularly in malaria. And uh, these are some, I'm not going much details about the I-64 studies because uh, it, there are several studies conducted, particularly on I-64 in different uh, things, field surveys, and uh, in collaborations, National Malaria Eradication Program, now it is vector burn, uh, national vector burn control program now. And uh, some double blind uh, placebo control studies conducted in uh, P. vivax malaria particularly. And uh, it has shown very good efficacy when compared to the chloroquine in, in, in the double blind studies and uh, in field trials also. 
and after that it has been patented and it, it, it has been uh, using for malaria by ayurvedic physicians malaria fever and uh, flu like illness and all uh, it has it has been extensively used by ayurveda physicians and uh, successfully with this background uh, uh, ccrs has uh, taken a study also because uh, uh, patients experience and uh, experience of physicians we took into consideration and we have uh, done a study on influenza like illness uh, in uh, mumbai institute and it has shown very good efficacy particularly in influenza like illness uh, uh, number one it is reduce the frequency of the usage of the conventional medication of antihistamines and all it is also uh, early recovery and it is well tolerated also and uh, it is found safe these are some uh, background information we uh, we had uh, uh, for the particularly repurposing of this product and uh, in silico studies uh, we conducted on i64 particularly uh, focusing on uh, covid sars covid 2 in national institute of nutrition collaboration it has also given a very good leads of, out of these four ingredients 36 compounds uh, from the four ingredients has uh, screened 35 compounds exhibited very good binding energies out of that uh, uh, we have a very good uh, economic anoxide which is from from saptaparna has given very promising uh, binding energies and uh, this is only the uh, uh, in silico studies we have with this background uh, several clinical studies has been taken particularly uh, uh, dr arvind chopra sir will be detailing about the icsir study and i can uh, these are the studies taken under uh, uh, with the recommendations of the interdisciplinary task force in three centers and other than totally there are seven studies we have conducted one study uh, with multi center with icsir collaboration that dr chopra sir will be highlighting on it i will put some very briefly on the six other studies which are taken particularly which will support us uh, for i64 uh, and uh, these are these six studies some are, uh, are, are rcts uh, around 220 subjects we have involved and single arm studies we have studied 80 subjects at different studies in uh, aims jodhpur and uh, government medical college nagpur Guru Govind Singh Government Medical College Hospital, Jamnagar, Ayurveda Yunani Tibya College, New Delhi, Chaudhary Brahma Prakash Ayurveda Charak Samstha, New Delhi, and Dhanvantri Ayurveda College, Chandigarh, in collaboration with PGI, that we have conducted these studies. I will put very brief on each one uh, within uh, very, very shortly. Uh, one study, this is a randomized open label parallel efficacy active control study to evaluate the efficacy and safety of Ayurveda formulation in I64. Uh, 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 to the in, uh, standard of care uh, we have given. Uh, this is very good uh, study. Uh, this we have particularly seen that uh, there is a statistically significant difference which was observed in the proportion of the participants with clinical recovery uh, uh, in I-64 group that is very, uh, very important. The proportion of the participant with the negative RT-PCR status was better in uh, add-on I-64 and add-on group. The proportion of the participant with improvement of HRCT uh, chest, which was statistically significant in the I-64 group when compared to the control group, that is also very encouraging, sir. The I-64, it is well tolerated and it significantly reduces the levels of the pro-inflammatory markers. These are all published uh, as a preprints. This is another study which is uh, efficacy and safety of I-64 as uh, add-on therapy to the patients with COVID-19. This is also a RCT which conducted in Government Medical College, Nagpur. And the clinical recovery, which was very good, 60% in 15th day in I-64 group, while compared to the 37% in the standard um, either, either control group, that is uh, standard of care, which is given alone. And the complete recovery in all participants we have seen on uh, 30th day, particularly in the I-64 add-on group, while only 85.2 we have seen in only standard of group, uh, group uh, care group alone. Like that we have, uh, this is uh, particularly, this is very well tolerated. Clinical recovery is also very significant in all ICE trials. If you see I-64 trials, we can see early clinical recovery we have observed uh, in whatever trial we have conducted more than seven trials, including ICSR. That was very good, significant in all. And a significant reduction we can see in the interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha, that other parameters in the add-on group to intervention group. This is another study which is conducted particularly in uh, Ames, Jodhpur. Uh, this is also a, a, a good study as uh, I-64 add-on therapy for the patients of 
COVID-19 infection. Open label RCT disease. This is also similar results. Sir. All the proportion of the participants with negative RT-PCR was better in I-64 groups. Early clinical recovery it is well tolerated. This is also under publication. This is another study which is in Burgovind uh, Singh Government Medical College, Jamnagar. This is one of the earliest studies we, uh, we studied. This is uh, the trend toward the lower incidence of the symptoms in I-64 group because the symptoms are uh, uh, very uh, well uh, controlled here and the decreased duration of the clinical recovery that is also very good. And uh, this is quality of life in this is also very uh, uh, significant in this group. This is another study which is single arm study of I-64 alone. Uh, and uh, this is uh, in this study, 69.4% participants turned to RT-PCR in 15th day and 86.1 participants showed complete clinical recovery in 14 days. This is one of the earlier study we conducted uh, uh, in uh, 2000s. This is the last study, but uh, another study which is we have done is uh, the evolution of the efficacy and safety of I-64 in the management of COVID-19, asymptomatic mild to moderate. It is an open label single arm study. This is in this, we have seen 97.2 uh, parts of percentage of participants clinically recovered in 14 days, out of which 61.11% are clinically recovered within seven days. The mean time of clinical recovery was 7.04 days. That is uh, uh, actually very good. The 36 participants who completed the 14 days of the study period turned RTPs are negative until 15th day out of which we can see 25 participants, 69.44% became RT-PCR negative by eighth day. That we, that we can see the average days in all clinical studies, if you see uh, uh, the cumulative uh, uh, understanding, we can see that the, the recovery, clinical recovery is five to uh, seven to eight days in I-64 group and, uh, and RT-PCR also became inactive in between seven to 14 days in this study. And they are well tolerated and there is very significant reduction in the pro-inflammatory pro markers and also IL-6 D-dimer and TNF-alpha and this is uh, well tolerated very very small uh, uh, sometimes AD, no AE sometimes small AEs we have observed no SAEs and ADRs AEs like small uh, burning sensation they are self-limiting and uh, and uh, it is well tolerated this is one uh, based on this, we have uh, a, a distribution program we have started uh, to document the efficacy of I-64 effectiveness uh, uh, by, uh, 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 in, the, in, in, a, in a study particularly. And uh, uh, the, in uh, totally 5 lakh uh, population, we have put the target. And we have given 21 days uh, package for the uh, people. Some uh, uh, who are already taking the conventional medicine also we have given. We have divided it into two groups. Whoever is already not, uh, they wanted to use standalone also. We have also included in this particular study. And uh, uh, so far, we have recruited 89,000 uh, uh, approximately uh, participants. Uh, and uh, uh, the follow up is 7th day, 14th day, and 21th day. This is a very good study. And uh, uh, in this study, we have seen uh, out of the 89,090 uh, 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 participants who are included at different stages, we can see that. And on average, 49.7 turned RT PCR in 14th day. Uh, 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 this is, this is uh, I think, 91.1 percent uh, uh, who turned RT PCR negative in the 21st day. This is a, a, a very, very good uh, trends uh, which are correl correlating to that of the earlier uh, clinical studies, and uh, studies are now continuing. This is the interim trends I am showing. And uh, very recently, we have uh, also initiated. Uh, drug interaction studies, particularly uh, of the I-64, uh, which is with uh, several antibiotics, oral uh, anti uh, hypoglycemic drugs, antihypertensin drugs, anticoagulants, hyperlipidemic agent, corticosteroid, antihistamine agent, anti-inflammatory, and other uh, medicines in collaboration with Imami Calcutta. And we, this will also give a good leads that when we are giving, because we can correlate when we are giving add-on therapy or standard, it is giving an excellent response that we can see that uh, we, to, uh, to, uh, to, we give some, some a type of preliminary evidence on uh, drug interactions, drug has been interactions also, as it is very already well clinically effective, well tolerated and all. This will also give a supportive evidence in future for us. Uh, this is few preprints uh, which we have published uh, 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 on uh, different I-64 studies. Uh, thank you very much, sir. This, uh, this is very brief on uh, how we uh, uh, developed I-64. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
thank you and all. thank you dr shrikant for emphasizing on the in silico clinical studies on uh, co ayush 64 in covid 19 and the recent drug interaction studies um our next speaker for today is uh, dr arvin chopra director uh, and chief rheumatologist center for rheumatic diseases he has over 30 years experience in the field of rheumatology he has been involved in the clinical study for comparison of ayush 64 as an adjunct to standard of care for efficacy and safety in the management of covid-19 it's randomized controlled multi uh, multi uh, centric clinical trials which has been published recently and he would be experience and views on efficacy and effectiveness of uh, ayush 64 in covid-19 uh, i welcome you in the webinar dr arvin chopra and over to you sir uh thank you very much uh, uh, rashmi is my screen visible uh yes sir sir i you sharing your slides yes uh so we can't see it right now uh i'll start all over again yes sir Can you see it now? Uh, Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see your slide. Okay. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon uh, to everyone. Namaskar. In the presentation mode. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. If you can put it in the presentation mode. Yes, Ashwini. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank uh, so, namaskar. <clears throat> um, I'm indeed uh, feeling very privileged and honored to be uh, with all of you this afternoon. Uh, first of all, I thank uh, uh, CSR for organizing this webinar. Uh, so my mandate would be to uh, focus on I-64, and uh, I must uh, sort of assure you that I'll be showing more than what glimpses are. Uh, uh, most of my presentation will be based on uh, this particular pr protocol. Uh, which was registered in the ctri randomized open label parallel efficacy active control multi center exploratory drug trial to evaluate efficacy and safety of an ayurvedic formulation uh, iu64 in this uh, in this context as adjunct treatment to stand of care for the management of mild to moderate covid-19 patients uh, right at the on onset uh, uh, please permit me to make uh, some Uh, statements disclaimers this presentation is a data and evidence based medicine presentation and uh, it's my plea that this cannot be used to treat covid-19 or repurpose in any way uh, other than that what's intended in this scientific meeting for any um, uh, extrapolation of my presentation to the treatment domain would certainly require a consultation with a physician and then there are some of my uh, statements regarding my role so uh the mandate uh, to me is to talk on i64 but as you can see in this uh, particular slide uh, this is this is there on a website which has been uh, uh, which has been launched by the csr on repurpose drugs uh, this is an extract from the website uh, my uh, i have, my involvement has been to prepare protocol for all these four studies that you can read and uh, all the four trials are over actually uh, possibly this will get updated very soon uh, but the uh, drug trial which is now complete is i64 that it has been analyzed and i'm extremely delighted to share some of the important results with you the other three drug trials are also completed and the data is uh, undergoing analysis we are still looking at the data uh, this particular trial that i am referring to has been supervised and monitored by uh by various agencies that you can uh, see in this slide uh especially i'm thankful to the data safety monitoring board and to the monitoring committee which is chaired by uh, dr kotoch 
it's a privilege, sir, to have you this afternoon with me. And he'll be adding on uh, some information after this. And this study is funded by Ayush and CSR. Uh, this is my uh, sort of evidence base. Here I've listed some of the important key references. I will be uh, drawing a lot of matter from the first reference, uh, which is which is there on the uh, medical archives uh, preprint uh, server regarding this current study that I'm talking about. Undoubted, there are many uh, good references uh, describing the role of Indian medicinal plants and formulations and their potential against COVID-19. And several of these uh, publications have uh, elegant experimental data, uh, or even some have animal data. Uh, the publications on, on human clinical drug trials are rather very limited. Uh, there are many trials which are registered with the CTRI, but I'm afraid that uh, uh, very few have got really published uh, uh, either in the preprint stage or uh, even fewer are in the peer reviewed literature. But I'm, I hope that in time we will see some publications coming out of these uh, various registered studies. Uh, as I said a little while ago, that, that this is the uh, key uh, sort of publication is available in the public domain. And uh, it's my request that uh, some of you may would like to visit this website and, and read the paper. The paper is the moment is undergoing review with, with the peer review journal. And hopefully we'll get back to you once that's published. Uh, we have come a long way from, from the day when the first uh, young lady patient traveled from Wuhan, China and brought COVID-19 to our doorstep in Kerala. Uh, it's important to uh, recollect uh, that uh, the pandemic was on 11th March and India was um, uh, declaring its war front on 26 March 2020. It's also important for me to add right at the outset that uh, uh, the Ministry of Ayush under the very able leadership of uh, Vedya uh, Koteta ji uh, has not lagged behind. In fact, uh, they have joined the national efforts in all domains, including the modern medicine, public health, whatever you may call it, research. And I think this is unprecedented, possibly the first time that Ayurveda has, has uh, launched such an aggressive and a well-planned campaign in an acute infectious disease state. People believe that Ayurveda is perhaps not suited for emergency. And this is a contradiction that here we are showing the role of Ayurveda in, uh, in COVID-19, one of the worst diseases that have ever confronted humanity. So thank you very much, Kotejaji, for giving people like me an opportunity and embracing me. Uh, I think uh, at the moment, this is an expression of, I would say, um, uh, uh, vision and application of uh, modern Ayurveda. Uh, so uh, also to share with you the timelines of this drug trial. And this particular uh, slide should perhaps uh, be very reassuring and convince us that we have uh, perhaps been quite efficient in planning, in conceiving, planning, preparing protocols, uh, registering protocols, ethical committee approval. The first patient was randomized on 18 June. And the last patient, last visit was on 25th October 20. I think disaster management demands that all our activities, whatever they may be, have to be on a war footing. And I think this particular uh, trial that I'm going to present now is quite an example of how what a teamwork can do uh, when they determine to, uh, uh, to do a study with the hope that the outcome will benefit uh, patients uh, at large and the community as well. So just to give you some overview of the design and methods before I uh, discuss, before I present the results. Uh, yes, this was uh, protocol based, randomized, open label, parallel efficacy to a multicentric study. The centers were in, in Mumbai, Nagpur and Lucknow. Uh, the sample size was non probabilistic or you may even call it uh, convenience with a significance at 0.05. But I am delighted to share with you that we have recently done the post hoc study par and uh, it's 72.4%. If this study was to be designed for superiority, the power should have been at 80%. So this is very close to 80%. And uh, the sample size is, uh, was enough to address all the research questions. It's a 12 week study. Why 12 weeks? 
We don't expect the patients to suffer from COVID-19 for 12 weeks. It was made 12 weeks because I thought this is a great opportunity to also look at quality of life issues. Uh, remember that this study started in the very first year. Our information on COVID-19 is very much limited. But now today we know that there's so many post-COVID complications, not only lung fibrosis, but many mental issues that I will talk about. And I think uh, it was very befitting that this tri trial was planned for 12 weeks. Uh, the dose uh, in this particular study was two tablets, 500 milligram each twice daily after meals. And the comparison was that of IU-64 plus standard care versus standard care. And the standard care was as per the recommendations of the uh, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, which were, which were operative at that stage. Uh, uh, not many things have changed actually, and if I have time, I'll talk about it. But these are the, uh, the, the investigators were asked to follow these uh, uh, recommendations, but also those recommendations which were which were which came out of the local institutions or local state uh, regulatory bodies, but everything was to be recorded. Our focus was on mild and moderate uncomplete cases. Uh, definitions are provided by these particular guidelines, but the clinicians or the PIs were asked to use their clinical judgment and try to choose patients uh, which perhaps uh, did not require any kind of oxygen intervention, which I'll talk about. Uh, Dr. Shrikant has already talked about the ingredients of IU-64, and I need not go into any of the details, except that I want to share with you that my literature review exposed the fact that all these plants are not, they may be native, uh, they're not native or only exclusive to India. In fact, these plants have been used almost all over the world, actually. Uh, uh, I think Elistonia scolaris actually is a Scottish word. Uh, these trees are even found in Scotland. And it's, it's been mentioned in Chinese traditional medicine as well, which uh, will, if time permits, maybe I'll talk about some experimental data from them. So these plants have been used extensively, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, Malaysia, uh, China, I said, in Europe, uh, and even America. Though uh, the Ayurvedic texts have mentioned them uh, in their earlier uh, classic textbooks. So uh, 140 consenting eligible patients uh, uh, after consenting, they were all hospitalized because at that point of time, when we start the study, it was mandatory to admit all patients. So even mild and moderate patients admit in the hospital. And as I just said, that was very important that we were not going to enroll patients with severe disease, which I've described in the slide. And uh, the two quality of life measures that we have used, one is a well-known WHO's quality of life with permission from WHO. Uh, uh, and the other uh, uh, questionnaire, health-related, uh, was actually designed for this COVID-19 studies by my colleagues in my center and have uh, been validated. The primary efficacy measure was time to clinical recovery. Uh, uh, Dr. Shrikant has very nicely presented some data from a couple of studies of I-64. I think it's a very challenging job in these drug trials to define clinical recovery. I think that's very critical. And therefore, the time to clinical recovery, and we're looking at the proportion of patients who achieved clinical recovery in both the arms within the time frame of 20 days. Here I describe what the clinical recovery in this particular trial was. We tried to make it as objective as possible. Uh, at least for 48 hours, the patient should have been asymptomatic with all the various requirements that I mentioned. And then the day one of the CR was considered as a primary efficacy measure. Uh, uh, the details of inclusion exclusion criteria are available in the in the in the protocol which is registered in the CTRI. Here I've just given a, some kind of overview uh, uh, and uh, and there were several exclusions which I think uh, 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 which some of you must have already read. So let's go on. So friends, uh, this uh, here I talk about the timelines and the patient's, dispre uh, patient's disposition over time. Uh, some of the procedures which have been done at week four, week eight, 12 after hospital discharge are described and on my right is a consort figure, which, we, which many of you are familiar with, uh, uh, two arms and talking about the withdrawals. But I think it's important for me to sum up saying about 140 patients that were, uh, that were that who signed the consent and were enrolled. One patient withdrew the consent. We were left with 139 patients uh, to go through the study and then subsequently uh, analyze them for adverse events and, and efficacy. 20 patients were withdrawn from the study. Please note 
that 17 patients have withdrawn after the discharge because they did not want to be in the study anymore uh, for whatever their personal reasons were. Uh, uh, during, the, during the hospitalization treatment, uh, there were only three withdrawals. Uh, all of them were in the standard of care arm. One patient worsened severe disease, required critical care, was withdrawn and recovered completely. And the other two patients had comorbidity. One developed uh, acute plasmodium vivax malaria on the day of discharge, and one patient uh, had severe diabetes with cellulitis and uh, an ulcer, which took a long time to heal. Uh, uh, very reassuring that there were no deaths in the study. Uh, it's very important for these kind of clinical drug trials to look at the baseline data. And uh, though I've shown you a lot of data, and I don't expect uh, anyone to go through all what's written, but this just to impress upon you that several measures, clinical, demographic, symptoms, were analyzed at the baseline to, to ensure that the randomization had produced two matching groups. Ayush plus means Ayush 64 plus standard of care, and then the other group is standard of care. Uh, throughout the study, even before I, when I was planning the protocol, and throughout, in fact, uh, several times, even in the monitoring committee, the concern has been raised that uh, how are we going to adjust for these standard of care drugs between the two arms? And here I'm showing that uh, uh, this is remarkable that uh, the amount of consistency uh, in each of the three study sites and overall, there are no differences amongst the drugs that are induced by the, by the two arms. And I think that, uh, that uh, that's very extremely important to interpret the outcome. Uh, the most important outcome slide of this presentation, here I'm showing that the primary efficacy measure, which was time to clinical recovery, you'll recall, I said that uh, in the beginning, uh, 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 the, uh, the advantage was for Ayush Plus, and the difference between the two arms, uh, I'm showing 95% confidence intervals, was minus 3, not uh, 0.3 to uh, minus 0 0.59, this is the overall study, but what is very important is that this trend of clinical improvement in IU-64 in terms of early recovery, less uh, hospitalization, has been consistently seen in all the three study sites. And I think this is very reassuring to me as a clinician. Uh, then there were secondary efficacy measures. In this, we also have recorded the onset of symptoms. Of course, there's a bias that we depend on the patient's recall. But this was very important to see that if we were to look at the date when the symptoms started, much before those patients were enrolled or had been in the hospital, again, the, uh, the favorable trend is in for IU-64. Though, uh, though the differences are not uh, uh, significant statistically, but the trend is highly in favor of IU-64 uh, uh, in all the sites and uh, in the overall study. Uh, several, uh, there's a large amount of data, and I, I don't intend putting everything on the presentation today. Uh, a lot of this data is already there in the, uh, in the uh, medical archives preprint uh, publication, and it will be coming in the publication. And, but here I'm going to show you some very uh, critical data that we clinicians look at. Most of you are aware that here I've shown the biomarkers or the blood investigation specific to COVID-19 that all patients go through. Uh, both the groups uh, improved in the reduction in C-reactive protein, D-dimers, interleukin-6, but there are no significant differences between the two groups. Please remember that if standard of care has taken a longer time to recover, these values are not easily comparable. I think that is a caveat which you need to remember. Uh, quality of life uh, issues, I think this is uh, perhaps um, uh, an extremely important part of the data which perhaps only this study has shown. Uh, as I said, we went beyond uh, just treating patients. Uh, we followed them up for almost 12 weeks. And uh, uh, there is a significant improvement in those patients who took Ayush uh, 64 with respect to, uh, you can see your physical health, psychological health, social health, and the four domains I meant, environmental health. I don't have time to go into the details, but then also I would like to tell you the next, as you can see, there are significant differences at all time points when it comes to health-related behavior, habit and fitness questionnaire, but allow me to tell you what this new question is all about. Uh, this, we have done validation in-house and I won't know the details, but this particular questionnaire looks at 
general health, anxiety, fatigue, energy level, bowel habits, stress, happiness, sleep, appetite, the kind of issues that you need for a holistic approach. Unfortunately, uh, in modern medicine and even in many of the public drug trials, I will hardly find data on these issues, which are so dear to the patients. And patients are asked to mark on a scale of 100. So let me give you an eyeball sort of uh, impression on what was the results. I think it's, it's very interesting that uh, uh, the results are there at discharge, week four, V8, week eight, and week 12. One asterisk would mean P less than 0 0.05, and two asterisks would mean P less than 0 0.01. I've highlighted some of the important things that patients who took I64 had less anxiety, they had less fatigue, which is an extremely important concern. They had less stress, they were more happy. When do we look at happiness of the patients and how do we look at it? And even the appetites are better. Uh, continuing with my uh, last uh, few slides on, from this data, there was no significant difference between the IU64 arm and the standard care arm. But uh, I think it's extremely important in any clinical drug trial to record adverse events very meticulously. Uh, it's my concern that many drug trials uh, do not record adverse events. It's very important. And here you can see the, the variety of adverse events in both the arms. But the three serious adverse events uh, were uh, only seen in the stand of arm care. Not too much should be read because this is relatively a sample size is less. But as I said, the power is good. I think uh, this could be taken uh, uh, in favor of IH64. Other than these three serious adverse events, all other adverse events are mild. No definite causality could be sort of arrived at between I-64, any other drug and the adverse events, not, not even the standard care drugs and particular adverse events. All studies uh, of this type will show many, many adverse events, and some of them may be related, but difficult to prove causality as per the WHO. However, I do believe that some gut-related adverse events, though mild and easily manageable, could have been due to I-64. And finally, I sum up saying that the adverse events in both the arms are almost similar, and I-64 is a very safe option. Uh, now to uh, basically my summing up slides, uh, if I was to look at the plant ingredients of I-64, there's a lot of evidence in the literature, and I think many of you would have seen that. And uh, interestingly, that uh, almost uh, everything that a clinician would want uh, uh, to happen in a patient with infectious disease like COVID-19 is evident in this particular slide including the fact that even the cytokines have been found to be ameliorated. It's just uh, with Cisalpinia, Krista, and Swarshya Chirata. The in silico work has been referred by Dr. Shirikan. For a clinician, this slide should be very important. Look at the number of disorders that these IU-64 plant ingredients have been used since several centuries to treat. To me, it's very important that, of course, malaria is all across, and Shirikan made a mention of it. It's interesting that these plants are used for diabetes. And I think you all know that diabetes is a very important comorbidity comor of COVID-19. And not only that, many patients of COVID-19 knife for diabetes show hyperglycemia and sometimes it needs insulin as well. But I, uh, in this particular protocol, we were not powered to really study the effect of I-64 on the blood sugar, though I have a lot of data, but this will need another study. However, uh, we didn't have any major concerns with patients who had uh, diabetes. And uh, I, in the baseline slide, I, I should have told you that almost 15% of patients showed hyperglycemia who were naive for diabetes at baseline. It's also interesting to note that some of these plants may be hepatoprotective. And then by now you've seen that they are being used in mental disorders. Not surprising that I'm showing you some very elegant data on how I-64 reduces mental stress. Uh, interestingly, that the traditional Chinese medicine have used uh, Alstonia scoris uh, saptaparna for influenza and pneumonia-like disorders for several centuries. And most sort of endearing to me is the fact that both Charaka and Sushradatta are very honored, respected uh, Ayurvedic sages, actually used a bark paste of Alstonia thousands of years back to treat certain skin injury disorders, leprosy, fistula, and ulcers. So we are not looking at something new. It seems like old wine in new bottle, but I think it's new wine in new bottle. Finally, uh, friends, uh, I need to just sum up now uh, the, the presentation with some very important factors I think which uh, somehow we very often overlook. Uh, 
This is uh, on the left is the proto uh, protocol management brought out by All India Medical Science in New Delhi, and uh, honestly, there's nothing new because we are facing a situation. Though we have a lot of knowledge on these repurposed drugs, but we desperately need a specific oral antiviral drug. Though the large majority of patients will suffer, uh, who suffer from COVID-19, asymptomatic, mild, moderate, they all will recover. But I want to make sure that an important message goes across. Difficult to predict progression of disease in early stage of illness. I think this is very important. However mild the disease is, one cannot take it for granted at that stage that our patient will recover completely. I think this is where perhaps many of us are defaulting in the clinical treatment arena. Therefore, I feel all patients of COVID-19 need supervised therapy. And this will be true even for IU-64, what I represent so far. Uh, I am glad to share with you some of the very critical uh, uh, messages which emerge from the National Clinical Management Protocol, which, has been, which is now posted on the website. A uh, great effort uh, by Ayush. Uh, my uh, colleague, uh, Professor Tanuja Nesti, has done a great job, a director of all to Ayurveda from Delhi in putting things together. And uh, uh, Dr. Kotod, sir, your contribution to this has been phenomenal. And I have had the opportunity to interact with you all. Uh, so uh, all I need to say is that though prophylactic care, if you note that, uh, we are getting at the data. I just want to share with you that our two drug trials on Ashwagandha versus hydroxychloroquine tell me, we've got some preliminary data, maybe at some stage we'll share all the data. Uh, uh, Ashwagandha seems to be a much more safer option than hydroxychloroquine in both the non inferiority drug trial and the equivalence trial, but we have to wait for uh, final analysis and then we'll present someday. Uh, also, I-64 is mentioned uh, in the treatment of uh, mild uh, asymptomatic COVID-19, but I don't think we have enough data to say that. Uh, we have data as I presented on I-64 in mild and uncomplete moderate cases, which is not mentioned in these uh, uh, guidelines. And uh, the trial on Guduchi Pipli is over. I'm looking at the data and uh, we will certainly share with you all once the data is ready. I think it's important that in the post-COVID management, though I-64 is not mentioned in these guidelines, I think I have presented convincing data about the efficacy of I-64 on things like anxiety, stress, and things like that. And I think we must remember that patients will benefit if you go I-64 for a long time. Uh, Dr. Shirikan mentioned on this, I would say, Herculean database. Agreed that uh, the, the, these are the patients who had used the mobile app, and uh, this is more than 7 lakh patients uh, all over India who have used this app. I want to draw your attention that a large number of Indian population has used uh, both uh, Samshamani Vati and IU-64 uh, to protect themselves or to treat their COVID-19. I think, uh, as uh, my friend Bhushan said in the beginning, uh, we got to be sensitive to what the population does, what the population wants, and and I think a lot of wisdom is available in that arena. We need data, of course we need data, there's no doubt about it, but we cannot overlook the fact uh, that our community, and much of this data is inspired by Ayurvedic physicians and other traditional healers, so these are big data, and I think what people like me are getting opportunities only to validate the data and providing some teeth to the fact that yes, I-64 is a safe and effective drug. Uh, my concluding slides now, I think I've shown that IU-64 hastens recovery, it reduces hospitalization, it improves general physical and mental health uh, when it is combined with standard care to treat mild and moderate, uncomplicated, uh, moderate COVID-19 in this particular randomized study. Uh, these are my recommendations. They have not been vetted by any particular professional body, but this is based on my experience of the last one and a half years in this particular drug trial and with my other Ayurvedic colleagues. And here I'm making a statement that though patients in our trial were all hospitalized, there's no reason I-64, uh, why it cannot be used in a domiciliary or quarantine setting. But as I said a little while ago, I strongly believe this should be under medical supervision uh, to make sure that the patients uh, stay protected. It can be used as adjunct to standard care, but the effect size that I'm showing this drug trial, three days is so impressive that there is no reason why I-64 cannot be used as a standalone treatment uh, as a large number of population has done and as many of my Ayurvedic colleagues 
have used I-64 as a standalone drug with some supportive care. I also want to uh, uh, impress upon my uh, cl clinical friends that I-64 may benefit your patients beyond uh, clinical recovery in that giving them a better physical and mental health. Uh, so in the end, uh, this was a very interesting uh, posting on the internet. Uh, it's, it's very, uh, I would say, uh, intriguing and both uh, encouraging that uh, somebody has thought of clubbing I-64 medicine along with the huge vaccine campaign that these two, thing, these two events seem to be very promising. Last year, I published an article, Renaissance in Ayurveda, in the Indian Express, and I can immediately recall that uh, the DGCS was very kind enough to put some comments on the Twitter, some complimentary comments. So, uh, and I think one year later, I think I feel vindicated that, yes, these are great times. This is a Renaissance in Ayurveda. And in the end, I cannot express my thanks and gratitude to each of these uh, wonderful people who have worked with me, uh, shoulder and he head and shoulder, in, uh, in completing this particular project. Uh, uh, several institutions are listed here. I sincerely thank all of them and many other people who we sometimes miss. They were dedicated COVID-19 uh, physicians who are assessor blind, who did the clinical recovery evaluation, several hospital staff, so many of my site coordinators and the staff, so many of my administrative logistic person, and not to forget the patient participants who entrusted, who put in their faith into this drug trial knowing that nothing will go wrong and we'll be able to look, take great care of them. I thank one and all. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Chopra, for this and uh, sharing the information on the clinical trials on mild and moderate cases in COVID-19. I am uh, very much intrigued with the mobile app data on uh, traditional medicines and the use of the people who might have done at home and registered on online. And uh, especially with the comparison of the ashwagandha and hydroxychloroquine, uh, that was also very intriguing. Thank you, sir, for your lecture today. We have received some questions, but we'll take up in the, at the end. I hope you stay with us uh, for the next lecture as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker uh, for today is Dr. V.M. Katoch. Uh, Dr. V.M. Katoch is Secretary, Department of Health and former DG uh, ICMR, President Jipmar Puducherry, and he is the developer of modern methods of rapid diagnosis of TB, leprosy, DNA chips, DNA fingerprinting methods, etc. He has contributed to expansion of mandate of JALMA from leprosy to all the microbacterial diseases. He is the fellow of all prestigious uh, academies of the country, National Academy of Sciences, fellow of National Academy of Medical Sciences, fellow of Academy of Sciences and Indian Academy of Science. Sir, we are indeed honored to have you here for today's webinar and uh, over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Rashmi. Thank you very much. I, I, you know, sir, this, this webinar it is very interesting. I may not have much to add, but certainly I'll have some views to make the, I mean, draw a, I think it's some, some roadmap of where we are and why, what should be done. Because Dr. Bishwajani wanted me to talk on the, the, what the role of the scientists and the physicians at the moment, what should happen at that level. I think that's the subject, which is a, not a new one, which always interests people. And, uh, Right from the time, you know, where Dr. Chandrasekhar enumerated the contributions made by CSIR when this pandemic broke and in the last one and a half year, whether it is appliances, is, uh, the drugs, repurposing them and then partnering with Ayush and uh, several of them, you know, there's a diagnostics, everything. So I think you cannot say, you know, that what, what one thing is more important than the other. Almost everything is important. And when you are thinking of a handling a pandemic of this nature, you know, there's a it is a socio-behavioral intervention which continue to be the most important, perhaps even today, plus your medical interventions. Now, the socio-behavioral, administrative, but then the medical one, the, how many, which, which system you are talking about? Medicine is medicine, actually. Professor Patwardhan has given very right, yeah, emphasized on that point, and that's true, actually. There's nothing like ancient, there's nothing like new, because medicine is eternal. It's the only thing we don't, we have not, if we don't, we have not discovered something, then we have not discovered it. So that means an evidence-based 
system and strategy or approach to deal with anything that includes the the covid pandemic and uh, in that context dr chopra has really beautifully enumerated the how that we went about for this the first results of the this trial actually which was so nicely done then the three are in the pipeline which again you know the csir and the ministry of ayush they partnered i think that's again my compliments to the two leaders which again has been talked about by dr chopra and dr padwardhan everybody dr chandrashekhar also highlighted that point but now the question arises whatever we have moved in one and a half year have we used it enough actually or what what you find what problem you find is it enough see the bees started at the same pedestal that's true because they also didn't have anything we also didn't have anything so everybody tried to repurpose something available and uh, in that context a good partnership starts by emerge you know these are more than 40 plus trials which are being conducted on the alternate systems of medicine that means the non allopathy systems they you know they are many of them are in the government institution they the allopathy institutions the modern medicine institutions so people are working with each other people are using the same protocol the same level of evidence that dr chopra was talking about whether it is statistics or the designing of studies is this the same that you do for allopathy or you do for a, any particular system of medicine the same thing has been done here also so the the medical knowledge now being put on a pedestal which is similar now something was empirical that was empirical for both ways but i think one and a half years later you can't talk of empirical thing you know you must talk of the evidence why because it is the question of the lives of the people so when the scientist talk something scientist have to talk with what is available and this applies to all this is not this is not something peculiar for ayurveda something which is separate by uh, parameter for the ayurveda siddha yunani or uh, homeopathy or allopathy it will be the same parameter but then the question comes who will apply who will use it now the iu 64 results were announced a couple of months back same studies same data beautifully presented by dr chopra in that then the press conference released by ministry ministry facilitated that and so what we have tried to do this entire period you know evidence try to find questions try to find evidences which are indirect ones same way which is done by any pathy and then to link it up with the the proof that it works this in iu 64 is very beautifully shown actually that it works actually it improves and it it is no contradiction with the current currently used allopathy also because you know there will be a huge number of people who will not have believe in anything they are scared of their life the same way the doctors will not have the evidence the confidence but this is a small study or maybe not a very big one but a reasonably good study reasonably good size which is clearly telling that using both of them together is safe you are using azithromycin there plus this one fine it works actually there is no problem and uh, so there so the, 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 the no no issue no issue to worry about but it, there won't be any, any any contradiction so i think that it will hasten recovery to some extent yes certainly that so i think it tells you positive benefits so if the people who want to use both they are free to use but then the question arises how fast we disseminate the message then disseminate how to whom now webinars like this cannot be organized every day so there should be a system of i think a linking up as giving it a, this is a duty of dissemination to someone who can do it more frequently i cannot expect the dg csars to do the everything together so how the this done by the government to create a i think a big pool of people who can You know, talk about it, disseminate it, and connect more people in the medical in, in the in the in the public domain, and and then the practitioners, the practition that means the allopathy practition and the Ayurveda practition who want to use it, because you know even if I wanted to use the Ayur 64 for my relatives, because in one of the families, or seven out of ten were affected actually, and they, and they certainly we have to contact she can't because it was not available in the normal the pharmacies, so then again through a government system. Yes, the help came when we could connect, and they got it. So they used both actually, and uh, so so that, that that means that 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 was because I was involved. I was knowing it, but then then I mean in, in the medical colleges where I was talking, how many people were knowing it? So that means that as rapid communication of the evidence which we are generating is, I think, is the need of the hour because you know the disease is not gone. People are suffering, 
and maybe you know it it may be a little down by number wise but might be percolating to the, the different sections of a society we don't know that also whether the data we are looking at is a true data or is a it is already gone to a pocket where the people don't suspect it actually so i think there are number of ifs and buts actually but the disease is very much there it is still has to know 60 70% even 60% positivity is there in the community already there maybe the 10 20% headed by the 10% headed by the vaccination or 5% headed by vaccination the still the 30 35% population will get it okay so i think whatever data we have generated they should go they should reach to the people same way you know the whether is from homeopathy or unani or siddha whatever the data has they have generated that again data should go to the which should be well analyzed and should go to the people but of this not a csir is headache because csir is not involved in those studies so so i think i think in that, that context i think the, we have to focus on what we are talking today that means examples which we are giving today and iu 64 was very nicely discussed because that data has been very very nicely analyzed but i must assure you know to the listeners who listening today many of the people who will i think they have the opportunity to disseminate and i think that's my again request to the people who listen it should not be curiosity listening actually you must think within yourself you must discuss with others and must disseminate because this dissemination of the evidence which is being generated and it is a real proof it is not something hypothetical okay it is not some presumption it is not something question of faith it is a question of a data which is we already have i think that 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 is the something which is a need which is which, is, which i think should be a very top priority at the moment as for the covid is concerned we know at the same way the data has been emerging with the vaccines we give the early approval for them also because they, you can't wait for the long term approvals and we have done the same for this this system whether it is allopathy or is done the the old traditional all the ancient systems i'll talk about the older system are just not a and they are nothing they are, they are no is inferior to them because they have the science the science which has lasted for thousands of years but today we need to talk in the same language well so far it can work up to 75% it can add on another 5% it can add on this much a percentage the people have to talk in the number of numbers because that is important for the lives of the people for the practitioners of all systems so i think that faster dissemination and you know as fast as possible the communication among the people who would like to listen to each other i think that's that's a challenge but there is no choice that thing that that's the priority which we, we we must focus on so keep on generating the evidence as we are doing but keep on disseminating is at fast as possible no this is not no, no longer the time for the presumptions you know this is we have a substantial we have already traveled a journey whether this is the data captured through the our own mobile apps which people have used based on their faith faith of the practitioner they tested them and that 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 also that data should be fastly discussed and uh, disseminated you know because the cross talk between the different sections of physicians the which are the integrative medicine which professor patwadan talked i think he has been one of the my old supporters from a, more than a decade in that entire game that that that's that's, that's you know you, that you cannot say there is a less important at, at any stage of life actually because until unless you know the two, two or three systems that They have respect for each other. The people will remain confused. Huge number of options are available. Now, some of the people have started using, you know, even the remdes beer from the day one. Actually, from the beginning, somebody started using the anti- the viral and even steroids in the beginning, without evidence. But as Dr. Chopra, you know, highlighted many things. Now, IU 64 not only hastening recovery in milder cases, moderate cases, not only showing that it improves the mental and social health of the people. it it has you know it may have another potential actually now three states were so badly hit with the mucormycosis and i tell you because i mean i mean i mean some of the principal of local medical college which has has a is a more than 6000 beds you know they have the, the medical college in jaipur is the largest public sector medical college in the country and they have a huge number of mucormycosis huge they have boards also so when i participate in their meetings web based meetings 90% of them are have diabetes they never went to a, even third, half of them never went to a hospital they, 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 it was there in their nose actually there was their environment and and but the diabetes was a common denominator maybe the iu 64 when it we had it was used in the beginning itself it would have might have reduced the mucormycosis also those the kind of the things we are not looking at but people like dr shirkant they have responsibility to look at that data or put another people on the projects so many people have used it in a mild disease how many of them really got the mucormycosis later actually 
So I think all other, we, we should keep our eyes open, keep involve the people, involve the physicians, involve the public health people, and keep on looking at the data. And data should should keep continue to speak and disseminate. I'm very I'm very optimistic actually that things are they may have their change. We have lost large number of people. We perhaps you know we, we have saved many. Perhaps we could have saved a little more also. But I think the, if the if the knowledge was accepted by the people fast enough, or the dissemination, the dialogue was more effective, maybe we would have saved a few more, some more also. They are very important lives. Every life is important, whether you're young or old, but the young persons, certainly we're losing a huge number of young people is certainly a very painful process, actually. And uh, that that country has handled reasonably well on all the things, actually. I don't say that way. I'm, I'm not a negative about what has happened. But uh, you the disseminating this knowledge faster enough for public good will empower us in the short run and the long run also. I think that's really my message. It's not a preaching only. It's, I mean, I'm just saying the, how they're seeing the public health benefits. Public health benefit can come only by the faster dissemination and faster interaction. Thank you very much. Rashmi, I've finished. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Katoch, for your uh, lecture. Um, and I'm really uh, feeling encouraged after listening to your lecture. And in this testing time, we need this kind of optimism and this kind of approach to uh, combat the kind of challenges that we have in front of us. And thank you for explaining the role of clinicians and scientists, scientists towards promoting traditional medicine and fight the current uh, uh, challenge that we have around us. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I would like to open the webinar for questions. And um, if you uh, would allow me, I'll, I'll uh, put forward the first question that we have got. So uh, we got a question from Nisha Ragwa. So uh, she's saying, is it safe to use integrative medicine, medicine without exposed advice? We could not hear the question. Your voice is breaking. Can you repeat the question? Um, sir, um, Nisha Ragwa says, if it is is it safe to use integrative system of medicine without exposed advice? No, still we can't hear. Uh, I think there's a problem from your side. Okay, 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 okay. Saying is it, is it safe to use the, uh, the Indian system of medicine without medical advice, right? This is a question. Yeah, I think Hello. that's it. Sir, can you hear me? There is a lot of echo there. Yes. Uh, sir, can you hear me now? Yes, this is better. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, the question is, is it safe to use integrative system medicine without first advice? Without advice. I will say very much ago. We should never use it, you know. No, nothing. They should be a, everything should be practiced under an expert opinion who they will understand it. But Dr. Chopra has given very clear message, actually. Yes, he can elaborate also. Yes. Uh, no, sir, you are absolutely right that uh, uh, if the question said alternative systems now, uh, please, uh, I, uh, I just want to make sure that uh, uh, when you talk of traditional use, there are many things which you use in the house also. For example, dood haldi. You don't have to. You don't need medical supervision for dood haldi. But I think we are in the context of talking about so so-called medicines with medicinal value. And uh, like uh, Dr. Kato sir just now said, I strongly believe that however much safe IU64 is, mm -hmm. how much ever effective IU64 is, and how much ever we want to uh, sort of search that to disseminate for public use because it is we have evidence. But I think the warning on IU64 should be. It must be used under medical supervision because we have no idea that which unfortunate patient will suddenly progress to severe disease 
will be under the false reassurance that my drug is working and we may lose him. So I think even if it's one or two person like Sir Red, I put out data saying this is the problem. We don't have good prediction of these particular COVID-19. We know risk factors, diabetes, hypertension, body weight, we know everything. But in a real life situation, if you talk to clinicians, we all have been caught on the wrong foot when we thought that somebody will pull through very easily has ended up as a very serious case and we have lost. Most many of us have lost some very dear friends actually, who were who are actually absolutely certain to pull through. There are very few cases, but but what Sir said and uh, Dr. Kotsu said, I recently have had this impression of a patient who started out very mild uh, and also not important, but extremely VIP person. Nothing short of the best things in India for him. And it was so tragic that after one month in ICU, finally he succumbed, which you could never imagine. Everything given, everything possible given to him. So we have to sort of you know take, keep that in mind that we are dealing with a monster. So I, part of your other question, answer is yes. Like I think this message should be very clear that all these drugs must be used under medical supervision. I, I hope I'm clear, qualified medical pre, 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 physician. I'm not talking about allopathy or Ayurvedic, but somebody who's qualified to be a doctor. And this was written in the national policy, which uh, uh, Dr. Katoj and Dr. Tanuja have brought forward. It's very written clearly those recommendations should be carried out by a responsible physician. Even if the drug is being distributed free of cost, please talk to your doctor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question we have is from Richa. She says, uh, any study done on Madhu Sudarshan Kada? Uh, she says that it is very effective against viral fevers and uh, she gave it to her father when he had COVID last year. So she just wants to know if any studies have been done in that respect. Uh, as far as CCR is concerned, Madhu Sudarshan Kada, we have not done any such study by this CCR. Okay, sir. So next question uh, we have is uh, directed to Dr. Arvin Chopra. Uh, the question is asked by Nagaya, Mr. Nagaya, and he says that CSIR Ayush did a lot of work on testing, clinical trial, etc. But this group con generated any scientific group research on active constituents on Ayush 64? Uh, thank you very much uh, for the question. I'm trying to understand that uh, what the questioner wants to know is that beyond Ayush 64 containing four plant ingredients, have we tried to find out some action active fractions of the various plants and trying to perhaps find a better drug. Uh, I know this work, I, to the best of my knowledge, has not been done, and Dr. Shrikant can add to it. Uh, but I may quickly add that I strongly believe that the inherent strength of an Ayurvedic medicine lies in its plant habitat. Primarily, though I'm a modern medicine and we have benefited from some kind of a reductionist approach, and my friend uh, Professor Bushin is here, and he may kindly like to add opinion onto it. I think the holistic efficacy and safety of the drug uh, should be considered, and I am against reductionist approach. You may do the studies for mechanism action, but uh, I am I'm not aware of uh, any uh, particular research on this arena. But Dr. Shrikant and Dr. Bhushan can add something. But as far as uh, uh, individual ingredients generally, uh, as far as Ayurveda is concerned and the current regulations are concerned generally, we position anything as an Ayurveda drug. Generally up to extract level we, ca we consider it as a drug. When we isolate and um, uh, uh, purify the compounds and do some molecular manipulation and developing a new drug, it, it, uh, it, it cannot be positioned as an Ayurvedic drug. That is one. Because we have a philosophy that uh, there are several ingredients within the within a plant or a, a, a complex which has maybe having synergism, which may reduce the toxicity of one ingredient in other. We have that uh, uh, holistic approach, as Dr. Chopra has told. That that is our uh, we can we can regulate uh, uh, in regulatory perspective also. We put up to the um, extract uh, levels only. We can do uh, either aqueous hydroalkylic any other extract that we can put a position as an Ayurvedic drugs. 
the individual ingredient uh, uh, isolates and all we we don't uh, do it okay thank you sir i hope it answers uh, the question mr nagriya had asked he has asked one more question that uh, is there any plant available to prevent lung damage and he wants to know any detail if we have such plant thank you And Dr. Shirkan, there is any data or anything we cannot discuss actually in our meetings. Sir, in the context of COVID-19, just we have some trends of uh, HRCT improvement, particularly in uh, I-64 and other studies. We cannot say that it is preventing lung damage is a claim. That is but no studies, even post-COVID study. Particularly, we are conducting in Nagpur, sir, Government Medical College, Nagpur, uh, with uh, uh, Agastya Rasayan and Ashwagandha for a six-month trial. We can uh, get some inferences when the trial is completed, sir. Now we cannot say at least uh, uh, we, uh, we can give any concrete statement or something. It is preventing lung damage and all. No, sir, uh, not directly lung damage, not directly lung damage, but uh, you may like to really refer to the work of CSIR uh, Institute only, IGIB. Uh, you know, they have done work on Adatoda Vasaka, and uh, that is some interesting work. You know, I, mean, I really like the way in which they have presented this work. They have published also. So, Bhavna Prashar's paper, you can refer. Uh, I just want to add that in the IU64 drug trial, we have taken x rays at baseline, discharge, and at 12 weeks, and uh, uh, we do not find any residual, uh, either lung-related symptoms or any findings at 12 weeks. They were findings at uh, enrollment and discharge. So though it's uh, 140 patients, but I may just add that in that particular study, none of the, none of the patients went on for post-COVID lung complications. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So there's one more question in which he has asked, uh, in Ayush 64, uh, uh, here some I think uh, he has mentioned that there are 35 compounds that are that have higher binding affinity on SARS-CoV-2 main protein. Uh, he says, is there any data regarding in vitro and in vivo studies of those compounds? We have not uh, done any in vitro of that, uh, uh, particularly in this, uh, particularly in that. That is, uh, we have only done the network pharmacology. Only we have not conducted any in vitro, particularly of those compounds separate. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, so th there is one more question from Mr. Venu Gopal. He says that CSIR and Ayush mainly focused on Tinospora and Vidania somnifera. But these are mainly immunomodulators. If we go through literature, there are some other medicinal plants in India that are specific antiviral against COVID-19. Uh, can we go in that direction? So he hasn't mentioned which plant, but he has just mentioned there are other plants that we can look for. So if we can go in that direction. Actually, DBT collaboration study, what I mentioned, you know, uh, more than 10 different plants have been studied. Uh, on the Syrian hamster model uh, for antiviral activity, actually. So that data is also available. Uh, some of that data is under publication. Uh, so Dr. Shrikant, uh, you can uh, uh, contact Dr. Shrikant uh, for details. And if you want to do something more in that, uh, there is a possibility. But uh, I can tell you that uh, some of the plant ingredients, you know, some of the plant extracts which uh, have been uh, studied for antiviral activity were comparable with the modern drugs also. So there is a good potential. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So uh, there is one question for Dr. Uh, Professor Bhushan Patwardhan. Uh, so he says that traditional system at one time before the emergence of allopathic medicines was popular and the only medicine available for human cure. And he says that can we uh, go back to that era and then uh, where we had more traditional medicine than allopathic medicine? Actually, what I said and what Dr. Katoj also reiterated, you know, that there is nothing like traditional medicine, modern medicine. Medicine is medicine is evolving continuously you know and traditional medicine uh, once it gets transmuted uh, with science and technology becomes modern medicine 
I gave example of Greek traditional medicine, but the same is true with many others. For example, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Sarpaganda, you know, from Sarpaganda, uh, you go, 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 got a new drug. It is no more a, a traditional medicine. It is a modern medicine. Resurpin is a modern medicine now. Or uh, UU2, what she did, you know, for artemisinin, from traditional Chinese medicine, a modern medicine came in. It became a modern medicine. So evidence-based medicine, you know, is a medicine. Uh, and that's how we should uh, go by that. Uh, there is no point in going back, you know. We can learn from the uh, history. But going back to the history uh, is not advisable. We should look at the future. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I hope I have uh, included all the questions that we have gotten on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and uh, Twitter. And I would like to thank all the dignitaries for uh, taking our time and uh, presenting uh, the lectures here today and enlightening all of us with the work that Ayush and CSIR have done so far in uh, COVID-19 uh, and I, uh, Ayush 64. Thank you all the viewers for being with us today. Uh, I would like thank to you. thank you. Sir. Thank, thank you. you.